it's just a, a sand sealer. Uh, you know, a spar varnish is better, but for today, uh, you know, it'd probably still be drying. I got to make blue wings this year for my rig. I sold basically off all my blue wings. And I'm thinking about just making them all in fall, in fall colors, which would be hens, you know. I mean, I like drakes. They sell. People like them. But I've never seen a, a hen come through our, or a drake come through our club that's got, I mean, hitch quote close up to nice pictures. Green wings or blues? Blues. And the green wings early, they come through there all like hens too. But about November, about Thanksgiving, they, uh, they plume up really nice. Uh, this is just a chip brush. For cheap. I needed a brush that was stiff. Everything on the on the market was just way too soft for me. So I went to these chip brushes and I trim them myself. I'll show you how I trim them, but I, I just like them. They're nice and stiff. The price doesn't really. I mean, it's it's more about the the stiffness of the brush. Is with the stippling technique and the dry brushing, you need a really good stiff brush. So we'll let that dry just a hair, but give me an idea. You might need little chip brushes. They're one inch, and I've already trimmed this one, but they're flat, you know? So I do a lot of scalping of feathers, and I needed a brush that was going to make and assimilate feathers quickly. Okay? So I just take a good pair of shears. And I trim this brush because if you're going to make round feathers, you need a round brush. If you're going to carve in the round, you need round tools. Pretty simple. So, anyways, so I'll just trim that brush about half round like that, and you'll see I'll get to do a lot of feathering with that. Really dry that out. All right, so then I'm going to come up in this rump, and I'm just going to do some dry brushing. And just start pulling that and you see how all the grain the screen got raised and then the stippling on the paint I did it built a texture and it's actually picking up the highlights of all that grain and that stippling so I'm really kind of trying to use the wood to paint it was just with the seat no 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 with the cedar and the sanding cedar we used it just stood the grain up so yeah nothing I did it was all the good carving that was put in. Give the camera a shot. Yeah. Yeah. So again, what I'm doing is, is I'm just dry brushing, and you can see how, if you're close enough, you can see how it's just picking up those high spots. And so I'm going to do some white shading, just just in these areas, like back in the tail. You got some white back there. And the nice thing about this technique is you can build on it. So you can do one coat. Now I can go back for some of this paint, and I, and I can do a second coat. If it's not white enough for me, you keep building. And, and, and honestly, it's not very difficult. I can teach this. To some raw umber. I use a lot of raw umber. Tons of it. It's a good dark brown and I just, I used lots of it. So, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back, now the, the back on that bird is dark. So I'm gonna come back and uh, I'm gonna do some shading on the back and I'm gonna do some shading on the head. Same brush. My brush selection is about three brushes, that's it. And, and primarily that one. It's an ugly brush, but it works. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of put some brown, some of that raw brown on the back and up around the head. And it's more, yeah, they're about 59 cents, so you got a budget for them. But uh, uh, th this is more stippling, okay? So more stippling. And what I need to, you know, I got to kind of remember, I got a side pocket here and here, but but I'm going to kind of, kind of, I'm going to jump up on this back and I'm just going to do more stippling. And one of the things I've learned in nature is nature is very irregular, okay? So to sit here and paint, you know, 
I like very broken up ones. I do. And this brush gives me that, okay? Tell those edges are breaking up nice. I mean, if you look at a duck, that's how they are, okay? So, I like what this brush does for me. So I'm just kind of darkening up this back. And the nice thing is, is with this dry brushing technique, you can kind of, you can kind of take this down to nothing. And you see that flecking in there that brush gives you? I love that. You look on a duck's chest, like the scalloping on the side, that's what that is. And this brush, when you trim it half around, will give you that. So you can kind of come in here and just kind of blend all that out and just kind of fleck that. And, and you know, really, my focus is, or being hunting decoys is I have to be able to do this technique and repeat it all the time and do lots of them. Because when I do birds, I do six and twelve at a time. So I've got I've got six lined up. I'm going one, next one, and I'm painting my color. And so I have to be able to repeat this technique. And this is just a simple enough technique to do that. So this is more uh, stippling, and it's giving more texture to the back of this, on top of this crown of this bird. Does this paint cause you any problems? If you put a new layer over a wet layer below it, if it hasn't dried enough? No, not really. Actually, it, then it becomes a wet on wet technique. Right. If it's if it's just drying and it's about to dry, you can start to pull it off. So you want it at least to drop. But if it's wet, I've done wet, like uh, I'll do in a bluebill, if I'm doing like a, uh, the green in the heads, I'll put black on the head first and then take some green in my brush and work it in it. That's a wet on wet technique, but uh, you can pull it off if you don't let it dry enough, okay? You can pull it off, I've done it. And so now what I'm going after is, I always do their rump, so if you've seen under the rump of a puddle duck, they've got that kind of brown flecking under there. So basically the way I'm gonna render that is I'm gonna get this brush and what I'm doing on this palette is I'm pulling it together so I get a little bit of a point, but you can see that brush is pretty ugly. But here's what I can do with it. I can start from the top and I can just kind of work down and I can just kind of get this flecking, okay? That's all I do. I mean, it's just to simulate the rump of that bird. And then the other side. I got a little heavy on that. I can fix that, though. See? Just under that rump, just like that. Show the camera. All right? Just start from the top and just pull him down. It's just a rump of the bird. I mean, that's going to be underwater. If the duck's seeing that, it's time to shoot, right? Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to work these side pockets. And with this technique, because I'm using this rounded brush, you always want to start from the back and work forward, okay? So now I'm going to try to simulate those feathers on the side, and I'm going to, and I'm going to bounce this brush in road. Another one, and another one, and you can even get up on the chest.
turtle ducks, they've got a little uh, shading here and here through the eye line. So I'm just going to take this flat brush, just kind of run it through here. detail as I get into is uh, do a little touch up here is I do the small flex on the head I like them it's overkill but I gotta be happy too seen drakes I've seen bluebill drakes with modeling on their bill what I'm doing is I'm loading some black in that brush and it's ugly I mean that's a but what it does a nice job of is this model okay what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start from the end and work backward again so all that broken up brush is really just kind of working for me And less is more. You want less. You want less paint in that brush. Okay. Less paint. 